Welcome back to the Vice Squad. Adam Hortonberry here. Um, for today's pattern, we're going to be tying up a Murdich Minnow in a size 2 with the A-Rex Minnow. Um, this pattern is great for smallmouth bass, trout, basically anything that swims, warm water especially, but uh, the variation we're going to be doing is a, a perch pattern today. You can tie them up in anything though. Um, <coughs> Anything from a uh, olive and cream. Um, yeah, the list is endless. I mean, you can just go and go and go. But yeah, uh, today I just want to thank our sponsors, the Fly Life Company and Anna Dramas Company. Um, and if you're looking for any gear, um, go to fishing and outdoors.ca canadian fishing outdoors.net for us um yeah i'm gonna go ahead and get started on this pattern <clears throat> you're basically just looking for a short shank hook i like a saltwater series because you can use these for for salt too um pattern is super fishy though i give it to my friends and that love game changers and they uh they end up getting hooked the material we're going to start with is from fly life company it is their predator hair and we're going to start with the yellow you're just going to cut a section off I would tie it a little on the sparse side because you're going to be putting a lot back here. This is basically just to keep the flashaboo tail in order and give it give it a body. But um, I like to cut it in half. So cut you cut you a little bunch off and then cut the half in half. And then what we're going to do just taper the ends. This, this fiber is very similar to the SF blend, but it's super, super fishy. I like it. I think it's a little less, um, a little less springy than the SF, but I, I actually like this a little bit better right now for what I've been doing. Start with one, two, disperse it with your thumb over the hook. And that'll kind of give you that nice little body to hold up all the flashaboo and whatnot then bullet tie it right there. And if you have any stray fibers, I would honestly just cut them out so they're not fighting you and interfering with the flashaboo. And then I would even taper it just a little bit. Um, in the pattern I tied before making this video, I did a little more dark tone to it, but I, for this video, I'm actually gonna use brighter flashaboo. Um, and again, I'm honestly gonna go heavy on the flashable. And you can always cut it out, but you can't add it. So, taper it a little bit. That being said, don't be shy. Tie it to whatever you think you're gonna like better though. You know, I just grabbed about, I don't know, 15, 20 strands but you can see that kelly green flash blue that i just put in there double back that's basically your body right there now we're going to build a little bit to the a little bit more just a tiny bit more a little more flash in there now i'm going in with a um um the perch fire tiger -y look just to add some more zing to it I think these pattern, this pattern is going to be quite long for a size two hook, honestly, but it doesn't matter. I have to go two wraps, maybe a one forward. Disperse it just a little bit with your thumb. Fold that back. Give it a nice little 
give it two. I'm actually gonna hit this with a little bit of glue because we got a lot of flash right there. That'll just lock everything in. And now we're gonna kind of build the wing. So I'm going in with, oops, going in with olive, the olive predator hair from Fly Life. It's really, like I said, it's really good stuff. Super buggy, super fishy buggy. I'd imagine you could use this on um, surf candies too, which I might do a video on soon. I think it would come out pretty cool because they're nice and long. So like do a cool saltwater uh, mackerel style, style pattern. And I'm actually not gonna use all of this since we're doubling it over, you're only gonna want about a two inch piece of both yellow and olive. So take your, take your hair back out. Measure it to the one you cut before, it's so it's somewhat even. And then you're gonna come in with it. Actually, this might be too sparse. Yeah, add just a tiny bit more of that. And again, the wing, they're not, it's not super necessary to be honest with you. I, um, I've tied them without the wing and I actually like them better without it, but we're gonna tie it how it's supposed to be tied, I suppose. So I like to go over just a little bit, like that. One, two, three. Going the underneath. The underneath, if it needs trimmed, I would recommend doing it after, and I'll show you. But um, just so you don't have to sit here and fiddle with it. And done. Just for the sake of the video, I'll uh, throw a little glue. Um, I If you fish a lot of pike, and if you fish a lot of toothy critters in general, I recommend always gluing down your thread wraps with streamer flies, just because it, it just makes your fly that much more durable. Um, now we're gonna come in with <clears throat> the cactus chenille size large um you could get green or something like that i'm sure they have that but i'm just doing pearl and we're going to color the head up with markers um i kind of think you get a cooler look to be honest now i'm just going to kind of even out this body a little bit with thread just so there's not so so much of a ramp there that it has to come down off of just clean that up leave it there you're just going to want to palmer this. I'd keep it nice and tight together. Um, it'll just make the head of the fly look that much better. And like I said, it's going to be colored up anyway. So if you do have a little gap, it's not really going to matter that much. It's just more for you than the fish. I don't think they're going to care if there's a slight gap, you know but you always want to practice your craft and make it and you know make it how you want to fish it basically like a good a good flyer will give you confidence and tie it right the first time take a little more time make it durable and you might not have to tie as much if you're constantly speeding through everything you're doing you're going to end up fishing a lot of, you know, having a bunch of flies you don't really care for because they're rushed and they're, they look sloppy. So just take your time and clean things up. Now we're gonna whip finish this. And then we have to 
color of the head, and then add eyes. For eyes, you want to use probably six, six mil. You could do eight, but they're going to be a little big on this. Um, we are going to start with, I'm going to start with the yellow. Actually, we're going to trim this up first. Hang on. We're going to trim the wing down just a little bit. It's a little, it's a little much. And then, like I said, the bottom we'll, uh, we'll trim after just cause we don't want to risk you know, screwing anything up. I'm going in with a, what color is this? It's just regular yellow uh, Copic marker. You could use Prismas, they're a little cheaper, but these Copics provide excellent blending. And they last a while, and you can get an airbrush kit with these, and it comes out really cool. So just keep that in mind, you know. You can kind of see that cool little sunburst we're kind of getting there. And then we're going to do the top. We're at a hot spot of orange shoe in the belly when we're all set with this. This fly is super cool, though. You could do, like, um, baby rainbow trout var variations of this fly. If you were to get, like, a cream cream wing. Um, what color? Uh, like a Mirage Flashaboo. And, yeah, just double up your Mirage and then maybe add a little bit of peacock curl in it too. That'd be pretty cool. But just play with it. Make it yours. Um, these perch patterns are probably my favorite because of how fit, like, just looks cool. Like old school Rapala type deal. We're gonna add our barring and stuff on after we add the hot spot. So get your, this color is just regular orange Copic. I like to put a nice little tab in the front there. I'm actually gonna put a tiny, tiny, tiny dab of red down there too. So we can kind of finish out that burst there that sunburst kind of deal and then we're going to add our barring for the perch and with the barring it doesn't really matter too much but if you don't want to do it you don't have to I think it just adds a little bit more to the fly. And if you angle your marker like that, you kind of get more of that fine tip. That'll, that'll make it get that nice barring on there for you. Now you're gonna wanna wait a second and with the power of uh, editing, we might be able to fast forward through this, but essentially you're just gonna wanna let that dry for a minute before you go on with the glue. The eyes we're gonna use are, the ones I'm using are from Deer Creek. I think they're called like Volcano or something like that, but they're a six mil. Um, they're, they're flat in profile, but once you stick them on here, they're going to make that, that head bulk out just a little bit and it looks super cool. So I like to put it right centered, you know, of the, of the hook shank. That's, that's a good indicator how to get your eyeballs straight on streamers is follow the hook shank and yeah. If you're doing this at home, I'd probably just wait a little bit longer than what I did. Because it's still kind of drying, but it'll be fine. 
for what I'm doing. If you don't want to do what I just did there, use your tips of your scissors and just push them down for 20 seconds so it doesn't get glued to your finger. And I do like to trim up the cactus chenille just a little bit. Just to kind of, you don't have to. It's, it's, once it gets wet, it's going to sh shape back anyway. But yeah, I like to trim it up just a pinch. And like I said before, if you're fishing around uh, pike and what have you, coat your thread wraps with something, head cement, UV resin, you know, whatever. But there's nothing more frustrating of, of a fly falling apart because a tooth hit some thread and unraveled on you. So. You could even use Zappa Gap right on the, you know, liquid zap like the brush zap I was using. Coat your thread wraps with that. Now we're gonna trim the bottom. There you go. Murdered minnow. So that is two. You could you could scale this up to a one on as well. Um, I you can go bigger, but I mean the one on is pretty large. Is like this is almost five inches right here. So I would probably I'd probably keep them between this size two and a one on being the largest. But the world world is your oyster, so do with what you please. And again, um, check out our sponsors and the. Uh, the links below to get all the gear you need and we appreciate your support if you have any questions comment reach out to us reach out to me on instagram i'll answer any questions you have um the supplies from fly life company they carry all the stuff i use to tie this so yeah check them out support them great people and yeah thanks guys